What's up everyone? Welcome to the video. I can't believe it. D1 is finally over. I finished my entire first year of dental school. I, I don't really know what to say about it. It was a long uh, two semesters and I'm just excited to be a quarter of the way through um, dental school. And this sounds wild to say that I'm a quarter of the way to becoming a dentist, but it was honestly a lot harder than I expected going in. Before I started school, I knew it was gonna be a step up from undergrad, but I didn't know it was going to be a giant leap up from undergrad. And even though it was so hard, I feel like uh, myself and my entire class, we kind of just rose to the occasion. You know, you have to. It doesn't matter how hard it is, you just put in the work necessary to do well and to learn everything that is coming at you and you, you just get through it. But it wasn't all bad, I had a ton of fun. I learned a ton of things about myself which I know is gonna benefit me immensely in the future. So I'm gonna share uh, the top three things that I learned from my first year so you guys might be able to know what to expect a little bit more when you are starting dental school yourself. So the first big takeaway from first year for me would be that low scores are going to happen. They are inevitable. You have too much going on at the same time. Low scores are gonna come and even lower scores than you've ever gotten in undergrad. And there are a few reasons why those low scores are inevitable. One being that some tests are just freaking hard and there's nothing you can do about it. I'd say in a lot of courses, one lecture in dental school, not all the time, but sometimes one lecture in dental school can equal three lectures in undergrad. So imagine having about 17 anatomy lectures that you have to learn, each of those being either double or even triple what a normal undergrad lecture would be that's just a ton of information that you have to fully understand and be able to correlate with other information and on top of that you're practicing hand skills and trying to do well in other classes. So another reason why you can't really avoid those low scores sometimes is because that grading can be subjective. When it comes to, and it, that's really when it comes to drilling and um, hand skills practicals. So. You are gonna drill, um, you're gonna do some fillings. You just hand your Typodon into professors and they tell you what they think that you did. So for us here at OSU, that's one, two, three, or four, or um, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5. And you can disagree with what they say. If they say that your walls are flared too much and you don't think they're flared too much or you think that they mismeasured something or they're too harsh on one aspect of your prep, it's kind of just the reality and you have to accept what they say and trust that they're doing the best that they can that they can, and that their number one goal is to have us succeed and so when they give us a low score, you know, we actually deserve it. But there are a lot of disagreements and we kind of just have to roll with the punches. Before we get on to some of the other points, it is Saturday, I'm going to head to the gym. Um, yesterday was Friday, we don't have class on Fridays this summer, so played some tennis in the morning with my shirt off, got fried, honestly, so burnt, and then I went and played golf after that, so even more sun. I have no clue how I'm going to do leg day today. The bar on my back is going to be incredibly painful. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but it'll be a nice wake up in the morning, get my workout out of the way, and then I gotta study some later, and then we'll get back to some of the tips. See you in a bit. Jeez Louise, 10 out of 10, leg day, little bit of back in there. Wanted to throw up the whole time. Glad it's over with. I need to go get some food, some protein, and let's get back to the information. Other times that you're gonna have low scores is just because you have a bad day and there's not really anything that you can do about it. You know, you guys have heard me talk about how I've studied for a test a ton and I feel like I know all the information and then when the test day comes around, it, I just don't do well. I kinda of just freeze up on the test or you just forget some of the smaller details that they happen to ask a lot of questions on. And you know, you just have to deal with it. 
Other times it's your hand skills. So you guys have also heard me talk about how much I practiced for some drilling and um, filling practicals that I've had. And I thought I was gonna do really well on it and then test day comes up and my hand skills are just not what I practice. So the prep I turn in is completely worse than the, all the preps that I've been doing uh, before that. And you just have to understand that those days are going to happen. You're going to have an off day and it's not a reflection of your hard work or even I know a lot of people take it to heart and it's not a reflection of who you are. But one huge thing is knowing that those low scores are going to come and that it's not the end of the world. Uh, I know myself in undergrad, first test will come around in a big class um, or even a little class and I wouldn't do well on it and so I would kind of just throw that class out the windows like well I got a low score so an A probably isn't really even possible and I would just settle for getting a B and sometimes settling for a B it's if you're settling to get a B it can be really easy to actually get a C in that class so really important to not give up if you get a low score if you get one of these low scores don't give up on a class because almost always there's an opportunity to um, make up extra points later on in the class or just kill the um, remaining two or three or even four tests so don't lose hope because you can lose a lot of points on your GPA just by thinking that you're out of the running for an A or even you know a high B, get those B pluses in there that really help to boost your GPA, so don't give up. So understanding that those low scores will come and pushing through those, making sure that you're just gonna work even harder in that class later on is such a huge key um, to what I learned. And I'm definitely gonna have to put that into play next semester that we, the fall semester we have coming up is going to be the hardest one of our entire dental school from what the upperclassmen say. So I'm bracing myself for that and I'm gonna try to use all these tips to help get through that. Number two is do not let stress consume you. Each week that you're in dental school, you're gonna have a million things that if you let it could stress you out like to the max, honestly. You have exams, quizzes, um, practicals, and even studying for those exams and quizzes and practicing for those practicals. Just uh, trying to prepare can stress you out alone because you feel so inadequate. So if you don't make it a conscious goal to just relax and forget about the stress, or not really forget about it, but understand that you know, you're gonna get through it, everyone survives, you will be so far ahead of the game. Going along with the topic of stress, you have to be very careful with who you talk to about um, about life in general, school and grades, because some people are just kind of naturally more high strung than other people. So like, I feel like my own personality, I'm very low key and I try to just not worry about the big stuff and I focus on just getting through it, doing the best I can and whatever result happens, you know, that's the grade I get. So I try not to talk a whole ton about grades and how school is going with certain people that I know are just naturally more stressed out than I am because inevitably when I talk to them and they start telling me all the things that they're worried about, I just start worrying about it myself. So be careful with who you talk to about grades, don't let other people stress you out. And that's in dental school and in undergrad. I remember doing the same exact thing in undergrad. I had some friends that just were constantly worried about things and it would make me constantly worry about those same things when it wasn't even something that I should have been thinking about. And at the end of the day, just remember 99.9% .9 of dental students pass. Uh, I think I had to take a step back kind of in the middle of the semester when I wasn't doing as well as I wanted to and remind myself that OSU wants me to succeed you know they I pay a lot of tuition to them and they don't want me to drop out and they want me to be a great representative of the OSU College of Dentistry when I get out so they're gonna prepare you as well as possible and if you find that you are really struggling in a particular subject or pretty much across the board they have lots of tools and help strategies to get you to where you need to be so failing or dropping out or not being able to finish it is not really a concern I feel like that only happens in kind of these rare cases where family emergencies happen or you get like a really really big sickness and it kind of prevents you from even going to class so barring any kind of crazy emergency you're gonna pass you're gonna get through it so just put that completely out of your mind 
The third and last thing is to just have fun. Dental school, like you can see from all my videos, it's hard. There is no doubt about it. No matter what program you're at, you're gonna be working your butt off. You're gonna be working harder than you ever have in um, life before. I mean, I'm assuming, maybe not, but definitely for me in my case, this is the biggest challenge I've ever come up against, but there is still time to have fun. And if you're not having fun, you are gonna be 100% miserable and with everything you have going on there's definitely still time to have fun have you have time for yourself you have time to continue the hobbies that you had before school started maybe not as much time I mean my golf game is struggling let me tell you but I can still get out and go play tennis I can still go hang out with friends go chill by the pool I can go to the gym um, pretty much as much as I want to as long as I'm making school priority first, there is ton of there is a ton of time to still have fun. And if you don't make time to have fun, to go relax your mind, hang out with friends, it's gonna be so infinitely harder than it needs to be. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Guys, thanks for watching. I can't believe that D1 is over, first year out of the way and I've learned so much. I hope you guys can uh, learn from some of my mistakes that I've already made so you don't make the same things and use some of these tips to help you get through and make the best of your first year and the next three years of your dental school journey. So as always, uh, any questions that you guys have, throw them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for all the support that everyone shows to the videos. I am so grateful for how big the channel has gotten. I can't believe we're already over 2,000 subscribers. Never in a million years did I think that would be possible before um, my first year of dental school is over. But I'm excited for all the content that I get to make this summer because I only have class four days a week, so every weekend is a four day weekend, which is awesome. I'm gonna be able to film and actually edit for real. So look forward to a bunch of great content and I will see you guys in the next video. Cracking.